was a kid, I had a little blue toy car. And let me tell you, this was bar none, the coolest little blue toy car a kid could ever have. So one day, I'm in my room, I'm in my dresser playing with it, and you know, going back and forth, left and right, having a good time, when suddenly, I drop it. And I thought I saw it go underneath a rug, so I checked. And I didn't see the car. I looked underneath the dresser, and it wasn't there. I looked underneath my, my bed in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in places where it couldn't even be, and I never found that toy car. Seven years later, as I was moving out of that house, I checked one last time. You know, you never know, maybe, and I still couldn't find it. So I said to myself, well, <laughs> I mean, at least it didn't go to a different dimension. Or did it? Well, I did some more research, and I found an idea called super string theory, which I should say is only a theory. I'm not here to prove it is true or say that it is true. But in super string theory, there exists the idea that the world that we know it does not exist in just three dimensions, but 10. And I think maybe we can find our little blue toy car. So let's start off with the first dimension. This one's pretty easy. If we were to cram everything in existence in the first dimension, we would have a simple line going to one point and the other on to infinity. Pretty simple. In the second dimension, we know this one pretty well too. This is like drawings or paintings, you know, things that we put on paper, they're all flat. And then, you know, the three-dimensional one, which we all know quite well, I can move to the left a bit, forward, and then jump, and I would have moved three-dimensionally. Now, I don't think that my car is here, I've already checked. So let's go one step further. What's the fourth dimension? Well, the fourth dimension is commonly hypothesized to be time. And if we think back to our first dimensional line, then the fourth dimension is no different. So we could move five hours into the future or five minutes into the past. Now, because it's a line, this doesn't really change anything. I mean, if we move on a line, that doesn't change the direction it goes. So I don't think that my car is here. That would mean that I would have it at some point in the future. And after looking for it, I don't think that that's going to happen. So if the fourth dimension is forward and backward in time, then the fifth dimension is left and right in time. But what, what does that mean? How could we go left and right in time? Well, think of it like this. We could go five hours into the future where I'm wearing a red shirt, or jumping on a trampoline, or eating dinner, or maybe where I don't even exist. Now, at this point, my little toy car could be here. It could be from here onward. There could simply be a dimension where I never lost it in the first place, or I found it. But if the fourth dimension is forward and backward in time, and the fifth dimension is left and right in time, then the sixth dimension is diagonal through time. At this point, we can go to essentially any possibility. I could go to five hours in the future when I'm wearing a red shirt and jumping on a trampoline and eating dinner all at the same time. So if we can move three-dimensionally through space and through time, then what's left? Well, in the seventh dimension, we begin to observe what we call starting conditions, meaning that the world existence as we know it began with an event called the Big Bang. But what if the world began with the little bang, or the medium-sized bang, or no bang at all? In the seventh dimension, we'd be able to observe these differences and see how exactly our world would be different. And in the eighth dimension, we can start seeing all the possibilities within them. So there could be a little bang where Earth has two moons, or three moons, or Saturn is on the other side of the solar system. So, What's left? If we, if we can go to any point in time, to any possibility, to any starting condition, to any possibility within them, then how are there still two dimensions left? Well, in the ninth dimension, we begin looking at the laws of physics, meaning that if we're ninth dimensional beings, we could go to five hours in the future when I'm wearing a red shirt, jumping on a trampoline, eating dinner in a world that began with a little bang, Earth has two moons, and gravity goes sideways or where matter can be created or destroyed, or our laws of physics simply don't make any sense at all. So what's the last dimension? Well, the tenth dimension is more of an idea, if anything. It's sort of everything. If we were tenth dimensional beings, then anything can be and is at the same time. Anything that we could even possibly imagine exists. So. 
why do we care? I mean, if we're never going to be six-dimensional beings going through space, then why should we even bother thinking about this? Well, think about a time when you had a really bad day. You got denied to the college of your dreams, your girlfriend broke up with you, and you stubbed your toe really hard. Well, in theory, there's a version of you that also got denied to the college of their dreams. They stubbed their toe really hard, and their girlfriend broke up with them, and they still can't find that little blue toy car. So if you're ever having a bad day, remember, someone in a different dimension always has it worse. Thank you.